In the killing of Simon, we suddenly see how the boys lose identity as people and they become a single organism, something vicious, something primeval. And it's an image of how they've regressed, almost in evolutionary terms. And so they've now become a mouth, and the mouth of the new circle instead of individual boys. Golding could be doing this to suggest that um, we're all like this inside, we're all primitive, and that we'll all be reduced to this kind of viciousness. Alternatively, he might be suggesting that this has only happened because the boys have been exposed to so much war. He's looking at how warfare affects people. The beast here is Simon, and it's on its knees as though in prayer, praying to be saved. But of course the boys refuse to save him because they've turned to evil. It was crying out against the abominable noise, something about a body on the hill. And this language of the body on the hill is deliberately reminiscent of uh, the hill outside Jerusalem, Calvary, where Jesus was crucified. So Golding is making a direct link here between Simon and Jesus. Simon is dying in order to save the boys. He wants to tell them that there is no beast. However, they refuse to accept that message. Do him in, they say. Spill his blood. And they see the beast as him. He becomes the sacrifice. Now, some readers might argue that they don't really know it's Simon in their frenzy. But look what happens here. It was crying out. Suddenly, they've taken the hymn and they've depersonalised it, which does suggest quite strongly they knew this was a human being and they've deliberately turned that human being into an it, into the beast, through their fear. The beast struggled forward, broke the ring and fell over the steep edge of the rock to the sand by the water. At once the crowd surged after it, so now instead of just being a mouth and a circle, Golding is describing them as human again. Perhaps he's suggesting that this kind of viciousness is something that, again, we're all capable of as humans. Or you might prefer to see it as the reaction of war. People behave collectively as crowds in barbaric ways because of the barbaric circumstances in which they live, which wartime produces. Next we have this violent image where they leap on the beast, screamed, struck, bit, tore. This list of verbs is quite shocking. Literally, they tear Simon apart, not into pieces, but you can imagine his skin and muscles being shredded as they bite into him and scratch him. And the sheer number of boys doing this is what kills him. This can be seen as a mockery of the transubstantiation, where... Jesus is asking his disciples to eat of the bread. This is my body, eat it in remembrance of me, he says. And the wine, drink this, this is my blood, drink it in remembrance of me. Um, so Golding could be parodying that here. Why? Is he trying to suggest that there is no God, there is no Jesus, it's all a myth, we are all evil underneath? and uh, Christianity tries to present a better side of humankind, but it's a humankind that isn't actually real? Or is he suggesting that through a belief in Jesus we can actually be saved? It's an interesting question because there is an optimistic ending to the novel. You can read the ending of the novel as salvation. Most of the boys are saved. Of course, when we deal with the ending, you can also argue the reverse. But Golding allows us to believe, if we choose, that there is a benign Christian God and he is there to save us. And Simon represents that kind of Jesus and salvation. Alternatively, we can argue that Simon's death proves that Jesus' death achieved nothing. There is no salvation for any of us. There is only our baser instincts and our ultimate fate, uh, our ultimate fate death. Um, and this brings us to the curious title of this chapter, which is A View to a Death. And uh, the word view is quite odd here. Who's looking towards death? 
is it perhaps the reader is Golding suggesting that that's our only fate and if so is he suggesting we can do something about it um, does he have a Christian perspective that invites us to be saved or is he saying Simon's death proves how ridiculous that faith is we cannot be saved there is only death